3.1 million dollars at 15 post um and it's uh osiri kutcher benioff cuban mike rapino from live nation we got nick adler as an advisor you've got sean neff as an investor and advisor um i'm forgetting somebody like it's a pretty great round of people that are supporting us and what really did surprise me was that how ready enterprise is for NFT and how hungry they are for NFTs. So, uh, okay. As I said, we're going to go deep into what is NFT 42, what its mission is, um, all the cool shit it's got going on from Avastars to various other things that they're doing with artists that we, we two of which we just met now people really kind of pioneering and pushing the space forward um as you saw from jim's cringe as soon as we went live that is because i'm gonna i'm gonna get some alpha out of him today he's been holding back lots of announcements to everybody's great frustration and so we're gonna we're gonna make them happen today you can blame me blame me jim um oh i will also um you know, one of the reasons why I was very kindly, lovingly telling Jim to, to shut up on OnChain is because, A, you know, we, we love each other. But secondly, uh, I want to I go really deep here, right? And um, so let's start at the top because, I mean, I'm assuming most people are aware. If you're in NFTs and you don't know who NFT42 and you don't know Jim, then, you, you know, you're not really an OG. But, of course, there are lots of new people entering this space. And so I kind of want to give, like, a potted history of um, – what you guys have been doing in the space and so can you can you tell us the story behind nft42 and let's go into avastars as kind of i guess the, the most sure. immediate incarnation of that sure yeah so uh we've been around for about two years now um just short of uh i think that uh i had been thinking about on chain a lot as i touched on in the last uh panel um since i had started collecting in early or late 2017 and into 2018 um, but then in around this time frame in 2019, uh, Larva Labs released Autoglyphs, which was the first true uh, direct intent to put art and on, on NFTs on the blockchain. And uh, prior to that, a lot of my musings and debates and arguments in the community um, had always ended as you just don't do this and it's not possible and it's too expensive and, and everything else. And I had trouble getting any sort of traction on the idea. Um, but when that came out, it actually gave like me all of the validation I needed to validate my own ideas around putting things on chain. And leading up to that, I've been playing with uh, a project that the OpenSea guys, Alex Satala and the OpenSea guys, have created called ETHmoji, um, where they actually had individual layers, um, and you could go and put these layers together and build the NFT you wanted, and then mint that NFT, and it's a unique NFT based on those layers. No one else can build that combination. I was like, oh, this is cool. I wonder if like the layers are stored on the chain. Because if they are, then you can only you, you only have to store that layer one time and then you can just like reuse that over and over again. I was like, damn, like this is this is cool. Well, I looked and it wasn't. And then like autoglyphs came out a couple weeks later. And then I was like, okay, on chain, you do the layers on the chain. So I set out and found a developer um, to go and help me build out the idea of putting these layered layers on the chain and then building uh, digital assets based on those layers and assembling them that way. So that's what I did over the course of most of 2019 um, after April, um, started working on finding somebody to do it. And actually the first person I talked to about the idea was Josie. Um, and we were conceptualizing what that could look like and everything else. And she was really helpful in the beginning and helping form the, what that idea would become. And then I went out and found some artists to go build the assets and then um, you know, the developer already had, we spent the last, the next nine to 10 months basically creating, putting the assets on the chain and putting the metadata on the chain, um, and creating a collection around that and some really cool and unique art. Um, so that was where we started, where NFT 42 started. Our first project was Avastars. Um, when we launched, when we were getting ready to launch that, um, we set up a community called Token Smart, um, which has about 7,700 members today. Um, largely lives in Discord, but we do events across the entire metaverse and all these different virtual worlds. Um, we set that up around the same time. So in early 2020, um, we set that up and then we launched Avastars. And then uh, a month later, we launched our first iteration of our minting platform called Infinity, where we actually stuck all the media 
um, on the Arweave blockchain, and then we store the metadata about the tokens on the Ethereum blockchain, similar to what we do with Avastars, but not as like complete. It's really accessible by anyone. So that's really like where we came to in, 20, in early 2020. And then for the next uh, six months to year, we've just been working on improving those ideas, um, making what we made better. Gas took a huge spike um, right when we launched that minting platform. So we were, we challenged ourselves to try to make on-chain more affordable. Um, so then we worked with jo uh, Joy to create Joy Toys and we worked with Pranksy um, and, and Carlini to create NFT boxes. Um, and then right around that time is when I met you, Jay. Well, we had known each other for a couple of months, but that's when you were asked me again, if you know, we thought we would want to join your accelerator. So, yeah. I technically, then, I, technically, I stalked you. But we, we got you in anyway, and I think it was a WIP meetup, right, where we, we kind of, I, I can't remember, we, 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 but I, I, I distinctly remember every time I had an engagement with you, a discussion with you, or heard about you, it was always in reference to kind of um, a lot of the principles that I know you hold very dear, like fundamental yeah. to the team, and then actually just the knowledge of how you then execute that. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of scarcity of technical understanding um let alone the nfts and, and, and being scarce um so maybe before we go into i know you kind of describe what you do with nft42 as being kind of canvas makers and i want to get drill down into exactly what you mean by that but maybe let's just close off on avastars obviously avastars is an ongoing franchise it's mm -hmm. just done a, a couple of drops can you just talk us through the kind of numbers that are coming through on that Sure. Uh, I think we have like 400 left in series four. There's five series total. Um, the project's been active uh, about two weeks short of a year. Um, we launched on 420 last year. Hopefully we'll close out before 420 this year because I'd like just like thing to be a year. Um, there's going to be 5,000 more in series five. Um, you basically go to avastars.io and you scroll through randomly generated just for you randomly generated combinations uh, of, of these traits that make up Avastars. And if you find one you like, um, you can add it to your queue and then you can purchase, purchase it. The price is gonna be based on the rarity, concentration of rarity in those traits. And then the art and the media are stored on chain forever. Uh, a couple of months after we cap series five, we'll release a ability to breed basically your avastars together and to create a new one. Each avastar only comes with one copy of each trait. So you have to be very selective in your breeding and everything else. But um, that's basically where we're at now. The project has done um, the pro really the project basically funded token smart. It funded the creation of the minting platform and everything else. So, um, and it also informed our um, development of the minting platform because we spent several hundred thousand dollars creating this from scratch as a bootstrap project and what we're aiming to create with our minting platform is a solution that would allow us to reduce those costs by 10x by providing the tools necessary to easily just go and do this and not have to have a smart contract developer on staff or worrying about keeping up with the latest standards or worry about how to do on chain when no one else is willing to do on chain except for us and we're not available to do it in, on a custom basis so we're really just trying to provide a platform where you know creators don't have to worry like they know if they're creating something on our platform that they're gonna pass the sniff test and these are going to be excellent nfts and they're going to be able to do things with them that they can't do on other platforms yeah and i think you know this is one of the things that hopefully really just comes through in hearing you talk but also the, the previous panel is i think by virtue of also being creators yourself you know developing these franchises um, you're beginning to develop solutions that can then be leveraged by by other creators, but it also yes. you, you approach technology from a creator mindset, creator first mindset, right? Rather than a platform first mindset. Um, so as I said, you refer to this kind of stack that you're building as, as canvas makers, and there are kind of three levels to that app layer, token layer, and um, the blockchain layer. Can you talk us through each one of those layers? Sure, and just in case anybody's not aware, like when we started with Outlier Ventures in their accelerator, we quickly identified that um, the immediate opportunity and cool stuff that we've been working on that we should develop further is uh, NFT minting platform. Um, uh, I wish I had a name. We've been through several iterations and talked to trademark attorneys, so we're just a minting platform right now. Um, but what we're building is basically 
I hate the buzzword now because everybody else is starting to use it as well, but Shopify for NFTs where you can go in and create a white labeled experience and launch your own storefront on your own website and completely control that experience end to end with the users um, and not have to um, be at the mercy of a platform or any of the features on the platform or those platform fees. Um, everything is designed to be ex easily accessible and easy to use. Um, so, so we're building um, this minting platform um, and what, I kind of lost track of the question, Jamie. It's all right, but whilst you were doing that, I was just going to say, canvas, I, think, the I think it was, I think it was me that came up with um, the Shopify for NFTs over Christmas on a call with you and Beeple, and uh, you gave it to Scott, who runs our program. It was actually okay, okay. I came up with it before. So you want to you want to front run that me giving Scott <laughs> yeah. credit for the Shopify? I'm NFTs. just okay. clearing that off yes. before anybody starts Look, giving Scott. You're credit. the one. You're you're the one who said like these guys are worth spending some time with. So you you get yeah. credit for that, even if you don't get Great. credit for the Shopify thing. Because but I, I but I think you know this. Scott. I think this. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, that's not the alpha we're dropping, by the way. Um, so I, I, I think this, but the, like, and you say it's an overused term at the moment. Everybody thinks they're building a shop profile for NFTs, but right. you know. So maybe the reason why that's important, as we just said, is increasingly platforms are curated. There's a backlog of, of to even get on these platforms now is almost impossible, even if you're an established artist. So how you serve this long tail of creator. Is going to be yep. increasingly hard and so you do that by making available your factory smart contracts right um, to allow for a level of configurability and uh, I, I guess an increasing control of the retail experience by the creator yeah so i mean at least right now what we're building is something where you create and deploy your own smart contract it has a very robust feature set for NFTs, like far beyond anything any other platforms are doing right now, quite frankly. And then we also provide tools to be able to integrate that storefront experience into your own brand or website, wherever you want. We also can provide that on our own website too, but that's more of an option. Um, we're not putting ourselves out there front and center. We believe that people want to build their own brands and experiences, similar to Joy and Josie on the last panel, they very much want to own their brand experience. And I believe that many creators want to do the same. So we're trying to build tools that do that. And then in addition to that, what we want to build is a very flexible and uh, nimble system that can leverage the, what we're doing now is we're starting to stop thinking of ourselves just designing tokens on Ethereum or tokens on Flow or tokens on Wax. We're starting to think about leveraging the entire blockchain stack and thinking of it as a single system and then being able to plug in different blockchains into different parts of the token at the appropriate times. The ownership layer is one part, and then there's all these other pieces. Um, you could decide you want to, you know, in our eventual system, you'll be able to decide what blockchain you want to deploy on based on your customer's needs or your familiarity. Um, we also are trying very hard to abstract the payment for an NFT um, from the purchase of virtual currency and cryptocurrency, because that's where the KYC and AMLs really come into play is well, on the purchase side, the KYC comes in when you're trying to purchase something with a credit card. You end up purchasing a virtual currency or digital uh, a currency and then purchasing the item. We'd like to just have people pay a credit card and deliver the item to them and not have to have them worry about things. And, um, so we're really just trying to make it a really simple experience. But underneath of it all, the technology is going to be superior. We're fundamentally focused on putting things on chain. Um, that doesn't mean that there's always going to be these expenses that exist today when we're writing and changing the state on the Ethereum blockchain every time that we're updating chain on chain information. There's different ways to do this, which we're conceptualizing. Um, you know, our development experience uh, is growing. We have expertise across several blockchains now, even though we're still focusing for the moment on Ethereum. Um, but we're about to widen that scale a lot. So if you were to look at our platform at the very top, you describe three layers. Um, what we call like the platform or app layer at the very top is a configurable app layer where it's your front end user experience, it's your wallets, um, it's the custodial or non custodial um, collection, um, it's different themes, it's um, maybe different like pack experiences where you can pack, reveal a pack based on like chain link RNG or something like that. And then in the middle, you have like this token layer, the NFT layer where you know, we'll play on the NFT standards and things like that. But you can also decide like what blockchain you want to deploy that NFT on, what storage layer you want to deploy on. 
if you're going to integrate a physical item redemption, you can decide if you want to use uh, Bosun protocol or if you want to use a different protocol layer. Um, if other people want to add bonding curves or farming mechanisms, like the silly thing to me is that like there's entire platforms launching right now around like single individual features that will eventually be added in by third parties to our system. Um, you can kind of picture this as like an Unreal Engine for NFTs in a sense. Um, and then on top of that is like the Amazon for NFTs. And then on the bottom are the blockchains that run all of it, basically. So as new blockchains emerge and new cool blockchains come out, um, we'll be able to um, utilize those resources. It's just like the blockchain stack, that system gets an upgrade. We get to use it. We're not going to stick ourselves on one blockchain. We're not betting on one blockchain. We're betting on all the blockchains. Yeah, so there's loads within that, right? I think... Um this idea that effectively there's going to be an NFT stack similar to the DeFi stack and of course in, in interoperable with as these things are forms of asset that we want to use as collateral in some way. Um, but I think it's really important to just kind of underline before we move on this idea about artists having their own smart contracts because as a collector within 100x I know collectors are putting in, in increased premium on whether an NFT has been minted um, from an artist smart contract that they control versus a platform. There is already a premium being established. And if you uh, heard the previous panel with Joy and Josie, you know, they specifically reference the idea that they want, uh, they look at an individual NFT or the wider collection as a way to control how they engage with their audience. And so therefore being in control of the smart contract, that's the thing that's issuing these things becomes increasingly important. Um, so I, I want to do two things. First thing is I want to make sure we get the alpha out of you. So let, let's, let's talk about, you know, who you've got in your round, um you've you've you closed pretty much within like two weeks of joining the accelerator program i almost felt guilty bringing you into it because it was just like you you, you closed the hollywood round two weeks in um and there's some people that i think by now everyone expects to be in uh, a round of an nft project but there's also a lot more to it right yeah all right well why not um I'm, you know i don't do get nervous it. very often do it. i don't Come get on. nervous very often uh, yeah, so I'm trying to decide the best way to tell this story. Maybe I'll just tell the story because it's really fucking interesting. Um, so uh, I don't know how many of you guys are aware, but Frankie Nines, Frankie Aguilar, he's uh, our creative director for our minting platform, um, amazing artist in the space himself. Um, and turns out he knows a bunch of people, including um, Snoop Dogg's manager, Nick Adler. And he's been telling me for a while that like Nick's like looking for a way into the NFT space and been asking questions. Well, you know, you know, along with the rest of the world, um, Nick got pretty curious about NFTs in the February time frame again and hit up Frankie to chat. So, um, yeah, I, uh, Frankie told him he should get on the phone with me that we're building something pretty cool and he thinks it's time. So I uh, got on the phone with Nick and had like a 45 minute call. It was really cool, fun. Like, you know, he totally just like loves the technology and wanted to, to learn more and know more and was just hungry for it. And he told me there was this guy named Guy that he wanted me to talk to. Um, and I was like, cool. So like 45 minutes after that, I got a text from Nick and this will come into play over and over again here. Got a text from Nick. He's like, hey, can you jump on a call with Guy Siri? And I was like, yeah, sure. I didn't know who Guy Siri was, but then I did some Googling and I found out he was, the first thing I noticed was he was U2 and Madonna's manager. And I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty neat. And I think I sent a message into uh, Rizzle, one of my co-founders. I was like, hey, I've got this meeting. Like, I don't know if it's real or not. Like, maybe they just want to like laugh at us or something, but I'll get on the call. So I got a call with Guy Osiri and Guy. It was an amazing call. Um, and uh, we ended up setting up another call for the next day. Um, I never got like calendar invites. I always got like a text or a call from Nick. So Nick called me the next day and he's like sending me the link to go jump on with Sound Ventures team. So I jumped on with Sound Ventures, who is Guy Osiri and Ashton Kutcher's firm um, investing in the NFT space heavily right now. And so I had a conversation with Effie and Maria and a few others over there. And I felt like it went well. There was no direct follow up. I'm just giving my pitch because Jamie basically like conditioned me to pitch and just pitch, 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 pitch. So that's all I was doing for weeks. Um, which is why I was able to get this opportunity because um, I was ready for it. And then like the next day, it was Saturday. I was just chilling. Nick calls. He's like, hey, man, can you jump on a phone call with Mark Cuban? And I was like, sure, why not? So 45 minutes later, I'm on a call with Mark Cuban. I had 15 minutes. It stretched the 
40, 35 minutes. So I'm sorry to whoever got pushed there. Um, but uh, yeah, basically did Shark Tank for 35 minutes with Mark Cuban, um, pitched our platform, pitched our ideas. Uh, when I got off the call, Frankie had been on it with me and he sent me a screenshot. And it turned out that Mark Benioff and Ashton Kutcher were also in that call, which I thought was pretty cool. And then the next day, Nick called. We're now on Sunday. We're like five days into this. And uh, he basically said that uh, they're probably getting ready to make an offer and um, wanted to know if I could talk to Guy later in the day. And sure enough, I talked to Guy later in the day and um, they made an offer. And then the following week that was closed. Um, and it turns out that everybody I pitched in that group that day, so they were all in. I mean, we've got Guy Usiri basically led our round along with Sound Ventures. So Guy and Ashton and um, Mark Cuban, who pre from Flamingo the other day said, if you know Mark Cuban is not invested in your NFT project, it is concerning. So we checked that box. That was even part of my April's Fool, which far too many people fell for, by the way. I, but yeah, yeah. So, let, so, let to, so, so let's get, because let, let's close off. So how much did you raise? What was the size of the round and who was in it? Because then I want to get into the use cases and, and people will rush me for time. But I think one really important thing to understand about NFT42 is it's not just art, right? And it's not just collectibles, but you're also looking to expand this into many of the use cases, including enterprise. So just give us the headline on the round. Give us the headline, man. $3.1 million at 15 post. Um, and it's... Uh, Osiri, Kusher, Benioff, Cuban, Mike Rapino from Live Nation. We've got Nick Adler as an advisor. We've got Sean Neff as an investor and advisor. Um, I'm forgetting somebody. Like, it's a pretty great round of people that are supporting us. And what really did surprise me was that how ready enterprise is for NFT and how hungry they are for NFTs. Because I was in the enterprise space before I worked for Google. And before that, I started a practice based around serving Google solutions into the enterprise. And I spent a lot of time on a lot of long enterprise sales cycles, um, you know, working 18 months, just trying to get to a decision maker for boring email integration. But let me tell you, it's really fun talking to CTOs and presidents and CEOs about NFTs at these large organizations who I spent years trying to beat down their doors for email and are calling me for NFT help. Um, their th thinking is next level. Um, you know, we've been having fun painting on uh, cave walls with berries basically up to this point with the technology that we've built, we've all collectively built so far. And now we're about to actually like build the computer so that we can like make this shit cool. Like, so can you tell us what, so obviously, for those that don't know, Mark Benioff is, you know, CEO, founder of Salesforce, and I think he was especially interested in what you're doing in an enterprise context, not limited to, but especially so. Um, so what do NFTs mean in an enterprise context? Well, I think they can mean anything nearly. Like there are um, literally a, just plethora of use cases that are still being explored and understood and admittedly even by me right i this was not super on my radar until six or eight weeks ago um but i think access is obviously like a cool use case for nfts and something that is an early and easily understood use case um i think that like even records management perhaps could become um, a part of all this identity also like the access is kind of tangibly related to identity as well. Um, there's a lot of different areas that people are exploring. I mean, I think for me, what I've realized is that NFTs are now just like Joy and Josie touched on, like it's an opportunity to, to directly connect with uh, a brand with their, um, with their fans. And that applies across everything. Like most of these brands have been using social media somewhat successfully, the more successful brands successfully for years. You see Ocean Spray, leaned into the TikTok thing when the guy did the, the video um, doing that. And now that's a thing um, because they market, they were able to capitalize on that network effect and everything properly. NFTs literally will span across every single social network and every single experience across the entire workplace. There's not a part of our lives that NFTs won't touch. And some brands and enterprises are starting to realize this. Some are primed for disruption and want to avoid that disruption. So they're getting in early. Others see opportunities to build a deeper relationship with their customers. So they want to do that. Others see an opportunity to increase their brand awareness. So they're going about it from a marketing perspective. Um, there's literally, like, really, it's just a matter of being able to build the functionality into the tokens and being able to achieve the scale necessary for these different use cases 
And then like, it's little, it's just like the sky's the limit. We're just, this is the new creative space. Like before it was like mobile and cloud computing. Well, now we have NFTs on blockchain and you know, it's cryptocurrency will underpin a lot of things, but like, it's really the NFTs we've been saying for years that NFTs are the Trojan horse. Um, and like, you know, we weren't really sure but we felt like it, it could be. And now it really feels like they like NFTs are the Trojan horse. That's going to bring the blockchain to the metaverse and the web three and the next version of the internet. It'll just be the fundamental layer of all of it. Yeah. And I think, you know, personally, what I'm really excited by is looking at NFTs in the context of, you know, CRM, customer relationship management, loyalty, as you say, access. Um, and I think, especially if you look at NFTs as forming this native social layer, Bitcoin was a native money layer, NFTs is a native social layer for the internet. Um, of course, that's going to be leveraged by brands um, in many different ways. And so I think I'm, I'm personally really excited to see see where you take that. I know there's lots of other things that you can't announce yet. I'm actually not going to push you, but you've made some amazing hires in terms of CTO, COO, um, from some mate. But you can talk about it. I can talk about one, the one that's on the Go side. On. Do it, do it, so, and then we'll then then we'll close off. One more out, bit of alpha leak. So we uh, we managed to just hire um, our CTO is uh, Bart Wyatt, who previously was, I guess, after Dan Lanimer left, maybe the the lead uh, blockchain architect at Block One, building on EOS. So uh, he built a great deal of the EOS blockchain, and um, I think you know spent enough time building blockchains, and now wants to build on top of blockchains. So I'm incredibly excited to have somebody of his caliber and talent uh, joining our team. Um, you know, I see Colin in chat here, like he's our uh, general counsel, which I think some people were surprised we hired general counsel so soon. But this is a um, very complex space with copyright and licensing um, and a lot of nuance involved. And we needed uh, an NFT degen attorney to basically fill that role properly. Um, so you guys may know Colin is stagflation, uh, just doxing him right now. Um, but, uh, he's, you know, really important part of our team. Um, there's a couple others that I can't announce yet, but we've definitely, um, leveled up from, we were five people at the end of 2013. And I think I've got a dozen people in my house right now. Should I just do a quick, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think we have time for a tour, but you feel uh, free. I'm going to cut you off halfway oh, through. On. All right. <laughs> There's Look, real, real people. people. Proof okay, of proof. Okay, never of, mind. We won't do it. Everybody's proof of people. Proof, proof of people. I think they're in this next room over here listening to me. So, yeah, Re it's yeah. Real there's deal. about 13 people here right now, just hanging out, doing work, and we're building the next version of the NFT platform that you know is way better than anything else anybody's making. Well, and also, hopefully, I know you guys are looking to create standards that can be adopted by other platforms, right? So it's not even. It's not even direct competition in places. So, um, but we're going to have to, we're going to have to maybe close off on that point and then we'll, we'll have to wrap up on the hour. We're like 10 minutes over. Yeah. I mean, in the end, we're creating a platform that will enable anybody to bring their ideas, new ideas and experiences directly to NFTs and to allow creators to leverage their innovations on our platform and monetize those innovations as well. Awesome, Jim. Thanks so much. That was a, a, a great little session with some impromptu, impromptu tour of the flat. Uh, I believe I'm going to do a closing segment to uh, close off the day and then talk about tomorrow. I think they're going to kick you out and drag me into another room. But thanks for coming. Jamie, on. it was really great, man. Uh, take care. Thanks for throwing this event. And thanks for everything. Mm -hmm.